Hold on to your breath, ladies and gentlemen. We are starting the, the first match of the Losers Bracket Final between Eternal and Aeonix. We have Nightlight on the Nurse kicking us off on the Father Campbell's Chapel, immediately looking around for any survivors he can find and bringing Discordance into this match, trying to avoid some gen rushing, but we do find Ace so quickly. Chase going to be taken into the shack side of the map, and Ace looks like he's broken a lot of sight for a little bit here to buy himself some time, but Nightlight's saying, you know what, I'm not going to commit to that, I'm going to find someone else. Does get a chase onto Ada, who now gets a pallet stun wow. directly on him. And it, yeah, <laughs> really beautiful Sunday, sorry. Oh, but Nightlight follows it up with a beautiful prediction. And I think Lucky Brick is going to be getting revealed here. I don't see any trash marks or blood. Oh no, Rushi, that is so unlucky. Goes down on the pallet space, but I don't know if we have anyone nearby for that save. We don't. Kedigsek working on the objective as well as Swatter. And I'd have to assume that Sashua is also trying to work on a gen as well. There we go. Three survivors put up on the gens and the hook is placed as far away as possible as you could really get from the gens, which is good to see for the start, but still a very early down. Yeah, it's very interesting to me to see them three put on the gens, because one of the reasons that Nightlight's bringing Discordance, I think, is it's a very common strategy against an S-tier killer like this to double, maybe even triple on a gen to make sure that you get a gen pop before that first chase is down, and Nightlight with Discordance knows they're not doing that. That gives him some information about the state of gen progress and specifically how how long he has before he can expect a gen to pop. He's gonna see um, an eruption actually. That's not discordance in the background. But Nightlight just sort of checking to see for anyone who's going to be coming for the hook. And it looks like he is pretty content with the three gen that he has around this hook area. Uh, but I wonder if they, if they get three gens pop before the before Urushi goes second, it's very likely that he will leave the hook uh, after the second. Yeah, it looks like he will. Uh, he's going to have to check on the gens if you're far away from him. One pop, and he's probably going to see the other two pop really quickly. So he is in a position to get a tunnel out onto Urushi. He can see them crossing from this other side of the map as he's going to see two and very shortly a third gen pop. And now it's based onto Kenigseg tag coming in and but now Mia has a, a whole part of the map where she knows I can just run here and die all the gems will pop it doesn't matter and Nightlight will knock him into that chase as the third gen pops he's gonna go back to Urushi and try to secure this kill I think knowing there is not any problem to the map and the tag onto Slaughter he he breaks a deep wound on Ada so she doesn't really get that much distance before he gets his blinks back she does have deep wound or the lucky break rather so Nightlight has to basically guess where she ran and it looks like he has decided that yeah, she has gone on to me, and now the the double blink coming in before she can get her lies down. This should be the death onto Arushi, but it looks like Nightlight is playing around DS or going for the eruption tags, seeing the auras of survivors after that down coming in. Does see an injured survivor running deeper into his side of the map, but it looks like Nightlight is going to prefer to just try and get this kill onto Ada as soon as possible, knowing that there is not any significant gen progress on the side of the map that he's trying to control. Mm, no, the Nightlight is a really, really insane well, controller of that hook there. Getting the potential one-for-one one off of Swatter, who I would have to assume is going to be the Deli player for Eonix here. We'll have that activated now, so we haven't really seen the resets been coming out too aggressively. Kedigsek getting caught in a really awkward spot, but a really nice double back. Nightlight not going to be using the... Is that Jenna's last breath? I don't know. Oh, actually, Deli is banned against Nurse. This is news to me. I apologize, but beautiful tag on to Sashua. That is really interesting then, that's what I went for that one for. Yeah, that's one of the, the, there's two big changes we've seen in coming to the season for Nurse. One was the ban of Deliverance, but the other is the uh, the introduction of this Jenner's Last Breath add-on, where this is the add-on where when you, when you are blinking, you can activate it and teleport back to where you started your first blink. And we've seen some really crazy blink plays coming out of Nurses using this add-on. And now all survivors being injured with one of their teammates dead and a, not honestly the worst region they could have. This one that they're working on is a little bit far away, but the survivors opting to not reset here is very interesting. It looks like Basua and um, and Kenigza might be trying to go for a reset here off in the, uh, the carnival area, but we do see water working on the channel this whole time, so 
you have to be very careful to not get tagged here because it will not be easy for him to get distance away from this with this uh, Generous Lost Breath add-on. And we're seeing part of the value of it, right? Nightlight can start tele start, start his blink on a gen, check into main, and when he sees there's no one there, just take his teleport back to the gen he was at originally for basically mobility here. He's not having to commit. Oh, beautiful find on the Kenning Seg though, up in the carnival, as well as the eruption props off in the distance. But yeah, just to also touch on that add-on as well, it's just insane with how much utility you have when it comes to holding a 3-gen in the later game. So even though the first elimination has happened with two gens still remaining, it's it's going to be so, so tough for any of those gens to get done. And I feel like you're, as the survivor side, your, your win con is really going to be to try and get either one or two of those gens done. It's less about getting the outs and more getting this final couple of gens done. Yeah, the thing that we're seeing with uh, Nightlight's build is it's very interesting that he's forsaken pop in this build, which is something we almost mm. always see. Um, now, we have had uh, another a ban against the Pop Eruption combo on Hunter, or s in general, rather. But we typically see the killer players preferring the Pop side of that combo. But Eruption is a perk we've seen getting so much value in situations just like this, where you you get an early tunnel out, and you have three, four gens that you're holding. Eruption comes in very, very strong at that point in the game. And it looks like the, the logic on the build that we have here is... I'm going to use Discordance to make sure I play my early game as perfectly as possible. And then Eruption will be what I prefer to have in the late game. Because if the survivors are going to, you know, offer this three split, I'm just not going to commit to the camp and I'm not going to use those pops early on. So very heads up play from Nightlight with um, definitely having a game plan coming into this as survivors, except for Swatter, have been able to reset. And I I'm interested to see... Okay, now the reset comes in on Swatter, so this is at least a little bit of a better position for the survivors. Um, they really can split on these two gens that are furthest away from each other and just basically hold their distance as far away as they can when Night was coming, but not quite enough for Kenning's They're gonna take the tag, and Nightly can now make the decision to go for a quick down onto the Nia and leave, if not getting it, but nope, deciding to go back to the gens, letting Nia take her tag, knowing, okay, well, they have another person to go reset her, and that basically stalls things out until Nightlight can find a survivor who's more out of position and who will basically get two tapped. Yeah, and we're gonna have to wait and see who was working on this generator here because they're already doing a really good job at stealthing. I have to say, Kenning's sake, rotating and meeting up with Swatter, doubling up on the other gen, but that's gonna give the Discordance proc and. I, whether Nightlight commits to Sashua up in main or goes for the Discordance proc. Gets the tag onto Sashua, who has to use balance to go into the carnival, but I think Nightlight's just going to go over to the double gen, as we know that both Kenningseg and Swatter are both there. So a quick chase on the Kenningseg and a hook inside the gens is exactly what Nightlight's looking for here. Yeah, but I don't think they're going to expect he has Discordance, right? It's not a perk that you see almost ever in competitive play, especially on the killer like now. So I'm, I wonder if Swatter got caught off guard, like... Because it, it looked like one of the survivors on that gen pre-ran and tried to basically bait the nurse, and they didn't know that the nurse knew that the other one was still around there somewhere, and mm. now coming on to Nia. But she is reasonably far away. We have to see how deep Nightlight can carry her into this territory. He might not even try and just go for the quickest as possible to check the other gens, but... <laughs> yeah, what we're gonna get. This is second hook onto Kenigsegg, so... Now, Kenigsegg has to be extremely careful not to cut out again, as... Tags coming around the other survivors mean they kind of have to do a reset. And this is where we're going to start seeing the power of Dinner's Last Breath as well. Nightlight can sit on the hook, send his blink towards these generators, and then immediately come back to the hook. So there's not really a window of opportunity for the survivors to actually go through full safely, especially without the resets. It's water might actually get cut out here. But whether or not Nightlight actually commits to Swatter though would definitely be sacrificing the gen that Sasha was actively pressuring. I think Nightlight can't really do anything until this elimination happens. So we're going to see this rinse and repeat cycle of using the last breath to, to try and bait out. Oh, we're actually going to commit to the chase on Sasha here. Swatter's definitely going to be able to get the pull, but the positioning is just awful. There's no chance that Sasha is going to be able to make it to anywhere. Get to the edge map, and there is the down and a hook inside our gen setup. So this is Nightlight's desired outcome for sure.
and he's going to know that the survivors are resetting on the hook so he has the option to go over there and essentially interrupt that reset on the other side of the map away from the uh the hook that he has now part of the strength of this 3v1 is when you know the survivors are forced into scenarios where they have to do altruistic plays you know where everyone is essentially and that makes it so easy to keep track of the last generators that are remaining so we've been at two gens for a hot minute now and there's not really much sign that that even one more gen will actually be broken. Meg was making such good progress on that other gen, but now that progress is going to be slowed down a, oh, quite a bit with the eruption proc coming in, with the dying light stacks building up on uh, the hooks onto Nia and onto Arushi earlier, and not really coming in on the Meg, but still, Nightlight is able to just go look for other people and just leave Meg on the hook there. Yeah, but I think Swatter actually managed to successfully sneak past. Nightlight had a very good idea that Swatter was going to be coming from that hill area and has gone straight back onto the gen. Nightlight's going to be coming over in just a sec to check up on either the gen or the basement. They're both just right next to each other, but Swatter's just going to commit to it, try and get it done. Kenixek actually taking some aggro here. If Chase gets committed onto Kenixek, the gen should be able to get done, but I think Nightlight is already going back. So Kenixek getting straight back onto this gen. Swatter needing to pre-leave and try and stealth this out, but I, I don't see it being very likely that Swatter escapes with his life here. Yeah, this is such a rough position to be in. And now, Swatter might be able to one for one here. I, I don't know if they'll be able... No, he's just going to take a distance and leave. I don't know if they're... I think they might have decided to just let uh, let Sasuke die on hook and just try to get one more gen. I don't think they expect they're going to be able to get any outs this game. But now with the eruption proc coming in, Nightlight knows where the last survivor is. And he knows they're not coming for this save, so is dead in the basement. Water's gonna get hooked on the gen that has the... It's the only gen that's close to being done, right? So now Nightlight just has to find where Nia is and make sure that he doesn't somehow sneak the gen by the hook and pop it. And this is where Jenner's is gonna come in handy again. But this is such a good map for controlling the portion of the map. If, if you can preserve it in the early game, that's what we're seeing out of uh, this map session. Yeah, it's definitely something you need to set up really early. Bit of an early swing there onto Kenningsek. He's going to be able to escape for just a bit longer. Swatter, I think, rotating back up towards where that hill was earlier. And yeah, I, I think Nightlight's just sort of going back and forth, making sure no one's still in the gen setup. But I think we do still see some scratch marks around this four lane here. Someone might have gone back around to this gen to try and get on it. And we do have Kenningsek actually staying back over here. And the mind games at the pallet tag does come through. But wow. I love seeing the absolute patience when it comes to any sort of standoff like that, especially against a nurse though, where you can just get flicked from it any Yeah, and the really yeah, unfortunate part down. for Ken Exeg here is she, she takes chase by the one gen that has progress left, so Nightlight's gonna be content in knowing that's not gonna pop. There's there should not be another there should not be a chance for the survivors to pop another gen here. This one was not close enough. He didn't have enough time for how quick these chases are coming in. Not a whole lot of survivors can do, as it's really just a matter of time before the ace is found, and maybe he can pick up the Nia in time, but as, you know, there's no, uh, the Unbreakable is on the ace and not Nia, as she's going to go die, and she's she's dying at basement, so Shaq is, or the, the hatch is going to spawn here, we've forced it in the offering, so the one question that remains is, where have the exit gates spawned? Because this is a fairly long map. And I know that Nurse can struggle to get from one side of the map to the other. If a survivor is just sitting on an exit gate opposite where the Nurse kicks hatch, they can actually just open the gate before she can reach them with their blinks. But Ace is not in position for that, it looks like. And those gate spawns are going to be so difficult for... I don't think you should be able to get those. Nurse can see both gates from, uh, from the middle of them. There's a fairly open line of sight between them, so... Mm. Water's gonna try to get. Actually, this one is not on the carnival side. This this gate might actually be doable. Yeah, and it's also being blocked by the hill spawn as well. So I think Swanda might actually have a chance with this. We do need to be careful of the of Jen's last breath though, because Nightlight can just check a door, immediately blink back after not seeing anything. But Nightlight actually commits to this door. I don't think actually. I don't think Nightlight swaps Swatter here. Swatter's gonna, I assume, do the the cheeky old ten percent tech and wait out another set of links before. Yeah, there we go. Oh, this is sense. And and Ace being quiet here comes in so clutch. I think there are quite a few other survivors. Oh, now it's on. Yeah. Oh, that's so unfortunate. 
Um, not only opting for, you know, the, the second angle to come at that door, really paying off here is, uh, the first angle is not quite gonna work, the second angle does, and now the grab coming in onto Swatter, that's going to secure the game for Nightlight. We're gonna have a 4k2 on this map, and it's gonna be a tall task coming in for the killer player of Aonyx. Happens over a 4k3, but you know, Spoker, the best part of having a tough win con like that is we get to see the killer players cook. Oh yeah, you can definitely say that one again. I'm really excited to see how Eonix responds to this. To what would probably be one of Eternal's most favored sets out of all the sets we're going to be seeing today. But with that being said though, let's get the second half set up and we'll see you all just after the break. Ladies and gentlemen, you already know what time it is. Quick bit of housekeeping before we go into the replay of trial number two. On the survivor side, on our med kit, we had an incorrect add-on, which has now been corrected. The perks for the survivor team all has to say the same, but the killer does have the option to change if wanted to, but I think we the same build. And we're going to be going straight in to a chase onto Dan on the bill. I love to see it. But a really nice uh, fake pallet stun as the chase goes over towards Shaq and nothing is just going to opt play for info here instead. Yeah, and nothing content with the build from the last time. And very significantly this time around, the spawns, uh, the swap sides. Nurse uh, previously spawned in Carnival, I believe, and uh, now gets to spawn... Actually, no, I, I, think I, I believe the same spawns. As another chase does come in a bubble in the Carnival again, and... As I recall, Bubbo is the lucky break survivor, so nothing learning from the last game. Not the survivor that he wants to chase. Look for someone else here. He does grab out this, uh... Wow. Someone, is it? Is this Nightlight, I think? I, I think it was, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, no, oh, it's 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 oh, Bubbo! Wow! Now, this is a really much good. better start. Get, getting such an early down, yeah. even if it is in this side of the map, like... Dan should not be able to finish this gen in time, and the pop comes in. Now, without the uh, the kind of the eruption build that we we're seeing earlier, it looks like nothing can be playing for a much, much faster paced game here, as the cybers are split on gens, and nothing has the leverage that seems to go and try and go for second chase. Honestly, potentially, yeah. As you were talking about, with a faster paced game, it allows nothing to to opt to go for more chases instead of forcing the stages onto Bobo playing around the hook specifically, but nothing can sort of play around the gens at the carnival and still be able to have somewhat decent eyes on the hook, especially with spies as well, to get that info if people are rotating in for the rescue, but we are going to go back and check on Bobo to make sure he's doing okay, as we know we're not going to be stopping those gens on the other side of the map, and our survivors are in fact going to be just committing to the gens here. Oh, even probably no they're not opting to double that gem which is good that would have given away uh discordance and it would have given info to nothing but i think dan's actually coming in for a one for one potentially yeah i mean one for one with the ftp it's interesting yeah so bubble hitting second here means that almost certainly it'll have to be dan that comes in for the poll with to go for an immediate ftp but because Bobo has hit second stage, even with the FTP coming in here, this can still allow for a faster tunnel onto him. I believe with that first chase coming in, the first down coming in relatively quickly, it means that Bobo will have some lucky break time left, but this will be the first tag onto him again, and he doesn't really have anywhere to go, and the Carnival has pretty decent LOS, as now nothing might get a little bit lost, but I don't think Bubbo should be able to get anywhere without being seen, and this should be basically a two-pack. Dead hard. Oh, oh, dead hard a little bit too early. Beautiful. Yeah, no, nothing weighted that one up perfectly. I, I think if Bubbo was a little bit later with that dead hard, it would have stopped the timer, and just like that, we're getting an elimination at three gems remaining, with the pop still available, but not quite being able to get to it in time. The sprint goes from Dan, though, I think. I might be wrong, but Dan does go down on that pallet. This is a really, really delicate spot for Eternal because with the, the tier one penalty for the wrong add-on on the medkit, a 4 is no longer a tie. It is still winning for Ionic, so they have to get that fourth gen done if they want to win this set. Yeah, and, and Dan, being lore accurate, does have the unbreakable here, so sort of baiting out the threat that someone might be near this pallet, but crucially, if you look at where these last shinners are, there are three around this carnival area, but there is still another one around Shaq. 
Oh, it's in Maine. Okay, so this is a situation where it would have been super clutch to have Xenoclast Breath, but, you know, this main building generator is the most likely target here, but what we're going to see now is as long as nothing is able to keep cycling out these downs, Pop is going to slow down these gems so much as Nightlight has successfully snuffed to the carnival side, slowly working on this 11 o'clock generator, and I don't know, nothing is going to have to find him as is heading this way does not have the pop but nightlight getting caught out here would be extremely dangerous as he is spotted stealthing away from the gen but now with this uh not a tag now the pole can come off and now there's a threat here okay nightlight avoiding that first tag is so crucial because he can get his distance away from the carnival and now there's okay there's a reset possibly coming in but there's also the threat of a of doubling basically on main and yeah you might know about it but knowing about it and being able to be there to stop it is entirely, but it looks like the survivors are instead going to try and pick up Nightlight's gen. Yeah, nothing being able to read on that absolutely perfectly. He's going to catch out the magic trying to rotate into the bundle. He's done. Waits out that Valor drop perfectly. Gets the tag. And now Dan is the only healthy survivor here. Still only hooked once though. Currently at four stages. But I think nothing is starting to get a better and better position. Checking up on the main gen to check for aggression. Reset has come out onto Nightlight. Nothing should know that the reset is going to be somewhat around this side of the map and is going to be looking around for it to potentially find where. Oh, we actually have Dan meeting up with the magic for another reset. And Nightlight trying to sneak back in. Yeah, Nightlight had the inner healing coming in there, and that that I think oh. aided out nothing into into looking for a reset where there wasn't one. As now La Magic and Dan are going to be resetting elsewhere, and Nightlight sort of stealthing. I don't know if he's going to look to pick up his old gen or try to start on the one that he's right next to. As yes, there's no progress on it, but if you're found on this gen, you are so much closer to safety, even if you take that tag. So. This might be the better adaptation, but it looks like Nightlight is opting to stealth to his old gen. And then this gives them the option to have at least one person on this gen and one person on the main building gen, since those are the gens that are furthest away from each other. As, yes, there's a three gen in Carnival side that will probably never be broken, but they only need to pop one of these. Ah! And an M1 tag! Oh, no. So has blinks! Oh, this is going to be so huge for nothing. Should definitely... Ooh, goes for a, a prediction bleak to sort of cut off Nightlight from being able to go back on the inside of the map. But the down is going to come through here inevitably. Yeah, and I'm not too sure... But they are doubling up Discordance. on the main gen, so we are going to get the Discordance block. They're not going to be able to get it done in time. And if we go for a slow here or even just play for a couple of tags before going back for a pick onto Nightlight, we can get our pop up and available maybe in time to pop this in before it goes, but we got to dry kick it and then maybe go for the pick onto the Nightlight. Can't really let our two survivors here at the main building get away with immediately hopping back on it. We are going to spot out Dan and probably get a tag out as the firecracker comes out. And we do get the tag onto Dan. The magic either rotating in to get the save onto Nightlight or committing to the gen. And we get the tag through the pallet. And the pickup happens onto Nightlight. So we know there's no one on that main gen. Dry kick to this, we're not going to be able to pop it, but I really got to commend Nightlight for the inner strength earlier, though, because it definitely caught me off guard. This is the spooky part of it for nothing, is maybe, maybe nothing can surmise that Nightlight was picked up, but there's always that threat that Nightlight had Unbreakable, and that the Nancy was working on a different gen this whole time, but we know that's not the case, as the hooks can come on to Dan, and a little bit unfortunate for nothing here, the fact that he had dry kicked the main building gen earlier means that he can't actually apply the pop creep just yet, but either way, the survivors are going to have to um, either not stop the regression, and now with this unhook coming on to uh, Dan, nothing is going to know where the both survivors are, and this does give him an opportunity to try and go for the actual hook onto Nightlight now, as the reset's going to be coming in pretty fast, or nothing can try to snowball this, but I'm not quite sure what the play is here. Looks like nothing making sure that none of these other gens were being worked on, but now this looks like an attempt to find... Oh, not the reset, finding Nightlight. And Nightlight is kind of close to all these gens, so nothing does have an opportunity here to get an opportune hook. Looks like there's going to be this one deeper into Carnival, or actually no, not quite as deep into Carnival, but closer to the main building generator, knowing that's the one that's most likely to be at risk. And especially if, if nothing is sort of patrolling main here, there is pretty good visibility from main to make sure that no one is crossing this choke here, that we're seeing nothing you know, check around. 
crossing the choke to this gen that was being progressed before, and also not like took. This is a little spooky to try and go for. Mm, and I just want to quickly touch on as well how we're seeing Pop not quite getting anywhere near as much value as Eruption would have in this case, as even though nothing has opted to sort of dry kick a bunch of the gens while given the time to, because obviously you need to manage your time so carefully. Wait, we got a crow disturbed by the by the magic, so I think with spies we're actually gonna have some info as to where our Nancy is, cutting her off from going back into the map. Sprintburst does comes out though, it wasn't on Bill, it was on the magic. Oh my goodness, but a really nice blink coming out from nothing to cut her off from being able to get the rescue. It most likely the magic suspected the spies there and was just preserving sprint first at least. Mm. But the question is, is Dan able to know? They're not working on the main building generator right now, so this second stage onto Nightlight is basically free. As you know, they're 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 playing fire with whether this nurse is gonna be able to tag them or not is this would be attack on the band and it will be now dan is going to book it to the shacks out of the map this is the best place for him to die and he does have ub if he's slug but with the fast reset coming in onto nightlight interesting that nurse does commit to this as uh i guess she knows that she has enough time on those generators now as a hook onto dan here will mean a pop onto the main building generator as the magic i believe has worked on the carnival gen this whole time so the survivors are opting to split gens but this generator has regressed to basically nothing this whole time so this is going to be so rough they basically have no choice but to be split on gens and pray that no one takes a tag ever because now with only two survivors left you cannot have a reset coming through and also work on gens and it looks like nothing spotted nightlight out the corner of his eye but deciding that it has to check on the carnival gen first instead, perhaps? Mm, I think in this scenario, though, Nightlight needs to be the one to play aggressive here and get caught out because the only way that I think Eternal is going to be able to take this set point is by winning on the book stage's condition by getting a hatch escape from even either the magic or Nightlight, but Nightlight being death or forcing that hatch spawn would be what Eternal would want. I don't really see them getting this fourth generator done unless we have an insane chase away from the main building where we are going to be catching out the magic though. Up in the surface, the sprint burst has come out. Oh wait, they need to pop the gen in order to meet the wind con. They have to pop the gen. But, but Nightlight's gen is the one that had decent progress on it. So even if the magic decides to just die in a corner or force the pick here, you know, any any time that Lamagic can buy is time for Nightlight to keep pressuring that main generator. And it looks like Lamagic is tied down the corner. No, the tag's gonna come in, and now nothing knows exactly where Nightlight's going to be, but this is simply a matter of timing. Was that chase long enough for Nightlight to pop this gen? We'll have to see, because if it wasn't, and this gen doesn't pop now, that should be game over for Eternal here. A big guess by the staff, I think. Ooh, wait a minute. Okay, really, really nice. We have to go for a... Wait, kick the gym? Try kick it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, the crap game is insane here. Oh my goodness, and there we go. With that kick of the gym, we should be able to get the, the down onto Nightlight and secure the 4K2 for Ionic to take the win here. Beautifully done. Taking down Eternal in their favoured killer set. All because of the point penalty with the medkit. Otherwise, this would have been a tie. That is so unfortunate. Yeah, very, very unlucky there. The There was that small chance of that mind game working and the generator being completed, but now also with Nancy being slugged over here, she does not have Unbreakable. This is going to be the hook onto her, and this is going to be the set secured for Ionix. It is a 4-2-2 for both sides, but the penalty coming in clutch for Ionix here, as they will be taking that first set. Yeah, but still, to all the Ionix, have you really got to be excited for this, though, is... They have lost the first round of the tournament, but have come through the loser's bracket all the way to this point to face off against Team Eternal, to potentially face off against Elysium tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow evening. But with the set point to Yonix to start us off, we've got the Mastermind set coming up on the Wretched Shop right after the short break. And welcome back to set two. We are starting off Mastermind on Wretched Shop. Uh, we have the killer Rushi for Aeonix coming in hot off the back of a win on the nurse set. So we we were expecting some uh, we were expecting internal wins here early on and it's not quite panning out. So Rushi looking to continue this trend as 
Chase is going to happen in main, and it looks like Bill is unfortunately not going to get the good window that he'd like to have here. Does get the vault, and now Ruchi is going to do a double dash here, but not quite enough to reach it. Doesn't have that uni medallion either, so he will have a longer second dash, and we do have Dan able to get away from this main building, but this is not a great tile to play, so a little unlucky on that RNG. Does dodge out that second hit, though, and yeah, Bill's juicing. As always, Bill on the juice will be able to make it over to this fairly isolated filler pallet. Just gonna free drop it, which is, I think, the right thing to do here. Oh, Rushi does oh. Oh, get down. Is he gonna get the throw? He does. Hits off the trash pile of the filler pallet near the main building. Really nice use of the firecracker, though, by Dan to try and get Rushi out of power. That would have been really, really awesome to see, but that is gonna be the first look of the game, and most likely a pain res coming out if we get a desirable spot. Nightlight's gen getting interrupted as Bubo is gonna be able to pop the first gen here. No pain res coming out from that first door. Yeah, that, that hook spot seems to be a really popular choice for Western players, able to get this this hook in mid-map and patrol the gens. Wretched Shop having fairly open lines of sight makes it extremely rough to try and rush this hook against the Wester, who can just, you know, yeet you away from the hook. There's not really any safety you have to do that, and Arushi opting for that over the pain res is... It makes sense uh, from that logic, and that first chase being a little bit shorter than Eternal would have liked is really rough. We, we normally would want to see, you know, enough time for two gens to pop before that first hook comes in, like... Yeah, and now Arushi can just sit here on this hook, knowing there's not that much gen progress. One gen pop, yes, but the hook is here, and one of the generators that was being worked during that chase is right next to it. So you can just sit here and throw people away from this hole. Mm, and then in response, the survivor side will obviously be expecting this with the placement and is going to be forcing the objective, trying to work these gens as much as possible. Arushi dashing away at the perfect time for the second stage to come through and to try and interrupt the gen as early as possible. Not too sure if we had someone hiding over in the TLs there, but the rescue is going to come out onto Dan. And at this point, Arushi just has to go straight for Dan and not only get the pain res, but get an elimination as well. We see Dan has managed to break it away over towards the shack, which is where his final chase is most likely going to be taking place. So, how is he going to play it? Yeah, the pull coming in uh, onto Dan relatively early is interesting because after Dan went second, that means that, okay, he didn't get as much time on the second stage, and this is going to be a faster tunnel than could have happened. Depending on how Dan can play this chase on the other side of the map, this is his redemption arc, essentially. And this Wesker chase is now Rushi able to break the power with that brutal strength. And now all Dan has over here is an LT wall, and maybe... This is a pretty good filler to play, I think. But uh, Rushi might be a little bit lost, thinking he's up the trial. He is not. Dan has to get this done. But now he's zoned in the really awkward part of the map, and I don't know if he'll be able to get anything. He played this before. Wow. Another edge map filler and stunned again. Dan is going to be able to make it further into the edge map. We'll have to suffer the hindrance of the full infection though, but it's done a perfect job at wasting as much time as possible for the rest of the gens to be getting complete. And we see two gens getting done. I don't even know if Arushi is even going to want to go for a pain rest at this point as the gen is coming. All gens pop for that after such a fast first chase is really, really crazy. We do have the Noed coming in to potentially secure one, maybe even uh, two more, uh, you know, survivors hooked and really killed. But, uh, you know, the survivors definitely got the memo that Wester games must be seven minutes or less. We're about four minutes and 25 seconds into this game, and they're, <laughs> they don't want to stick around that long. Not doing keeping count or anything. <laughs> That pulled live split up just for that joke, like... <laughs> wow. Interesting, Arushi decides to not go close to that gate, knowing that they got that gate open, and trying to catch someone else out, he does see some scratch marks, but it looks like those scratch marks... <gasps> the survivor is not here, all they have is an edge knife palette, there is brutal strength, there is no ed, and this is honestly also just bloodlustable. There should not be a chance for Exiles to get anywhere here. He has to go for a stun, I think. He does have the lithe, and they are... <gasps> they're getting no ed. Oh, he needed. Oh, no, it's just gonna come through at the perfect time, but no! Yeah, that's not enough. Exos is gonna go down just as the totem is gonna be getting cleansed. And with this, Arushi's gonna go for even more. Catchy out Bobo, who cleansed our totem, I believe, but might just be coming back to confirm the stages as the door, I think, is in a very favorable position for our survivors here. Sort of close by to where Exos has been slugged here, so 
at this point, it's it's greed that could be costly for Arushi. And seeing that the door doesn't even have any progress on it, is going to be comfortable with going for this hook here. Yeah, and he can he can carry Exize really far away from those doors and make it so that even going for a two-man save here is just not worth it. You'd have to essentially get everyone out. Uh, but this is just too far away. Yeah, they're going to take the outs. Mm -hmm. This is going to be a 2k6 with just two freshes. Noah definitely helping secure that uh, <laughs> that extra endgame kill, but that was crazy gen pressure for Eternal. I did not expect him to pop all gens for that. Definitely a good bounce back coming into this, and now the win condition is going to be set at seven hooks or six with three freshes going into the next game. That was six minutes and 10 seconds, almost a speed run attempt from the Survivors of Eternal. So we'll have to see if the Survivors of Aeonix can keep up with that gem pressure going into the next game, which will happen right after a quick break. Welcome back everyone to the second half of the second set. And I have just one word for everyone. Egg. <laughs> I, I really love the choice of egg from Nightlight here. I'm really curious to see how it works out in favor of bringing the leather gloves for the, the power recharge. We are going to be spotting our swatter on the Jeff as our first chase of the trial here. Going to be able to get over the pallet though. I don't think it's enough distance to get the tag though. No, Nightlight has to break that pallet or play around the trial here to get this tag onto swatter here. But swatter is playing it really well. Good dodge. Yeah, and I think the Jeff pick from Swatter is just countering Dan's Bill Riz. Like we, you, you can't, you can't just let him get away with that. You have, you have to go for a more stylish pick. <laughs> as as Nightlight oh, yeah. saying, you know what? I can't handle this. I'm going somewhere else. Does not stop with him to remain. They do get the good window, so Nightlight's gonna go ahead and fast break that uh, breakable wall next to it to make it a little bit of a weaker loop. Now this pot's gonna come down, but it, there might not be enough disappear. This has to be played, and now Hags is coming on to Arushi, and crucially, it's also an M2 down, so this risk of the infection coming in is uh you know gonna be real for arushi here on the ellen is this is a, a pretty good palette to play and now arushi should be able to get some distance away from the work gems but not having enough this will be a a pretty fast down onto arushi as well not quite as fast as we saw in the last game but we'll have to see if the remaining survivors trionics can keep up with the comparable gem pressure especially if this central hook is going to be a pain rest and it was that's so much big Wow, but even then though, the gen pressure that we're seeing from our survivors here for Ionix right now with, I think, two, well, two gens with a decent amount of progress, one of them just getting hit with pain res, Sashua committing to it, as I believe Swatter will be rotating in to play for the pull once the second <laughs> stage comes through, as Nightfly has been able to spot out one of these progress generators as well, that was Kenexx gen, not too far away from the main building, and... And I feel like we're having a very similar start of the trial here, but Kenix is going to be giving away a tag, though, getting caught out trying to get back on the gen. And I think that's going to be the difference between what we saw in the last game and this game. So close to egg value. That almost was another M2 on this water. That would have been huge. It looks like Nightlight might have been waiting out to try and get the M2 onto Jeff into popping the uh, deep wound on Ellen, but wow, it's not going to get anywhere. So close to dropping shot pallet. If she's not DS, then... Seven minutes is... Oh, she was. Okay, that might have been a deliberate choice not to drop. Backpop, then he's not. She can drop that and get more distance. So that that was a deliberate choice, I think. So I was going to run away, and <laughs> and delaying this chase should be helpful. As, remember, that one gen that was by the hook further away was interrupted by the hook, and so they want time to be able to do that, and Arushi's going to have to play this pallet. It's not that great. It looks like he got a little bit caught on the tree. Unlucky. Yeah. That was really, really unfortunate for Arushi. I, think, I don't know, we didn't hear something running in. I don't know what I'm talking about, but the third generator should be getting completed as well as we've already seen the pain red coming out on Arushi. And even though we're getting that pain red value, we're still at that point where we've had three gens getting completed with our second stage on the trial onto the same survivor Swatter. Getting caught out from a really awkward vault. Nightlight going for a beautiful dash, but not quite going to be able to connect onto Swatter here. I think it's still going to get tagged here regardless heading over to this main building yeah and, and now we have uh software going through so now and this is a little bit of a snowball scenario as the survivors we have so many attacks i mean now we can just body block this you know hook grabs may be gone but uh body blocking still alive and well it's now the down on the bank and remember the win condition here is to just have seven hook stakes and so another fresh hook another pain res 
and the threat of no adding another survivor if if that comes into anyone other than swatter this is very rough but it looks like and that way now has leverage not yeah, Nightlight now has leverage to not really need to uh, stay on the hook because he also has the the threat of a th of three fresh hooks, mm. right? Yeah, so, three fresh six stages. <laughs> but like, so yeah, Slaughter is thinking about you want them to get. But, okay, that was yeah, those knotters are, are kind of earned. <laughs> Nightlight's like, yeah, I did do that. <laughs> I'll right. say because not only are we getting the down onto SWAT, but it's going to be on that central hook once again with a plane res as an added bonus. Even though we haven't been able to go for the tunnel out onto Arushi yet, even though we have four survivors up in the trial, I think Nightlight is just in a so much more of a favorable position. So we're already at three fresh right now with four stages. So even if we get an elimination onto even Swatter here and we don't manage to get it down at the end game, we are going to catch out SWAT. Uh, Kenning said though, sorry. Wow. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm losing my mind. It, it was a Rushi I was thinking of, not Swatter. This was Swatter's fresh, but mm. this is just snowball out of control. Even two more hook stages is enough to win, and Nightlight is, is in complete control of this game. It, it would take a, an act of God for the survivors to come back from this, to be honest. Uh, with, you know, Swatter being able to be forced to second, with Kenig's egg still slugged, uh, you know, they, they somehow have to get Swatter off the hook, and then also pick up Kenig's egg. And then also not die in the process. And it looks like Arushi's gonna have to, you know, test this hypothesis here on the on the bus. But I don't mm. think this is a magic school bus, so <laughs> we, we might be in a little bit of trouble here. There's no Mitch Rizzle yeah. to carry Alan out of here. Wow. It's so nice seeing Nightlight hitting these these double dash hits. It's really unfortunate for you. I don't think this is a recoverable position for them anymore. As we're forced into the 3v1, we see Sashua is straight up just committing for a fourth generator here. And it's not even going to get done in time either. As Nightlight is going to be able to make it over to the shack before Sashua can do anything about it. Now, there was one thing I wanted to mention, but it has completely skipped my mind a bit here. Oh, this is not recoverable. The survivors... Um... The, the death onto Arushi was the official uh, loss. That was three three fresh from six ages. So Sasua mm. is, is not breathing here. That is accepting her fate. A little, little bit of a, a, a funny meme there is the game was already lost. Um, so now now all that's left is for Nightlight to find uh, Kenigzik on the ground and, and, and wrap this second set up. Yeah, set point already being awarded to Eternal for the second set here. Our uh, team's being neck and neck at the moment, and with a very interesting third set that we talked about earlier in the campfire chat, the Wraith on RPD. I, I, it's going to be a blast to see which team comes out on top of We do end up finding an exec here on the ground. To I'll see you dead. A 4K2 is a very impressive result. For the Western Open, that's to be honest. What I wanted to mention earlier, just now come back to me, is as survivors wanted to play really aggressive and not go for a reset, I think almost at any single point. We saw the spray coming out onto, um, onto Arushi, I believe, who was the original tunnel man. No resets really happened after that point, and Nightlight was just able to snowball off of that so well. Yeah, I think the survivors were trying to mimic the gen pressure that Eternal had had, and it just it just did not quite work out the same way this this time around. So now with our our matches tied one to one, you know this is working out to be a great series. So I'm looking forward to see what happens in the race set as we come back after a short break. All right, and we're back with some more spooky action for the All Hallows League event. We do have Wraith making his return on RPD, and we do have survivors spawning on the East Wing, most likely, which will be a very rough situation for them to to uh, to be in if Bubbo can catch one of them out on the spawn here, and not quite able to do that so far. So it looks like they. Oh no! Well, I spoke too soon. Sorry for the caster curse, Kenigzeg. She does have a power to play here. Oh, it gets hit the swing. Yeah, the greed at those palace when you run up against Swift Hunt is just really, really unfortunate. And now Kedexek has to play these really unsafe uh, palace that Bubba can just flick around, basically. And oh my goodness, that one does come through, though. If Sun puts Bubba's armor on the same side of the pallet, no need to even reclo, because we should be able to catch up with Kedexek in just a moment here. The pallet drop comes very early, and that, oh, that was so close to Kedexek actually making that. That would have been insane. 
Yeah, and, and we're just we're just seeing here once again how precarious the uh, East Wing is for survivors. There's just not really anything safe to play against Wraith. But it's interesting, you know, we've seen quite a bit of Wraith in, in All Hells League so far. And one of the things that's been interesting every time is to see what build the Wraith players bring. There's been a lot of cooking going on, and this might actually be the first Windstorm choice that we've seen. You know, Windstorm being an add-on, you see a lot in pubs, but typically you're seeing like a Swift on Shadow Dancing for comp race. We've been seeing some all-seeing, and I I'm wondering if if Bubbo is, is concerned about the relative size of this map as far as getting from place to place, and certainly if he can get these chases on east side, not having Shadow Dance isn't maybe that big of a deal, but uh, I'm curious to see if this add-on choice actually works out for him. Yeah, I only just picked up on that myself as well, and I definitely f can see the vision here that Bubba's going for here. Going for the unclick as well to make sure that we get the second stage confirmed. Taking off all the boxes in my book here. Uh, oh, here we, we see Rushi coming in, getting the pull just before second stage. We're going to get our second fresh and the eruption prop onto the top middle generator of RPD, but we still have our first gen getting completed in the distance. Another paint res going to be coming out and really hindering that middle gen progress, which... I feel like it's very important to get done as early as possible. Yeah, and you know, changing pain reses here, the windstorm now actually does come in clutch, being able to get right on Bubble immediately, and uh, you know, or sorry, onto Kenny's egg. And um, with these injuries coming in, we do have one rush no. body block. Did she make it around the corner? No, the good pathing on Kenny's egg to dodge that hit, but having to take chase to street, there is pretty good pallet here. But after this pallet is down, this pile is pretty much a death sentence. There's now uh, Pagana coming onto Kenigseg. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's just so hard for survivors to get anywhere safe when the hooks are being done on this side of the map. It's a really strong position for the raid to be in, as we do have some resets coming in. But those resets are going to lay gen progress, as now there's the threat of what if Kenigseg gets funneled out at four gens here? We've seen time and time again how good Eruption is at stalling out these. Um, these 3v1 scenarios that the Wraith gets himself into, especially if the survivors are just not able to get away from the east side of the map. Yeah, and now that we sort of we've touched on it a bit with Windstorm coming into play, it's definitely going to make holding that 3 gen in the later game so much more powerful with the ability to just go back and forth and rupture the gens and, and get it done. But what with the FTP onto Kenixek to stop that timeline from happening too early? There's no way he makes this window. He makes it! Beautiful stuff. And this pallet is still up from earlier. Kenixek, the greed actually coming out in favor of the survivors. But the medium bolt is going to cost Swatter everything. And the cloaking might be paying off here. I mean... Yeah, one of the the main downside that we always saw when Wraith didn't bring Shadow Dance was you would see all these chases that would happen where the survivor would just drop every pallet and it was a, a, a time test basically. You know, how long does it take the Wraith to burn through those pallets before the first down comes in? But if the downs are coming in without even going through the whole pallet drop process, then it doesn't matter. And you know, Bubbo getting a lot of fresh hooks here too is a really good position for him to be in. We're at three fresh hooks on four hook stages total, and only two gens popped for it, and I don't think there's all that much progress left. And especially if this top lobby gen is still up, which I can't see, it might have been popped already. But, you know, having three gens roughly around this hook, with one in the street, the one in that, I call the tiger room, I don't know what you normally call it, at the bottom lobby, <laughs> like, you know, once uh, Kenigsegg gets a hook here, Kenigsegg is dead on hook, and, uh... They have to basically play interference for him, but I'm not gonna come in. Different the pallet and a bit of a pocos, a bit of a split wraith here, you know, strong. As this will be the death onto Kenigseg, and most likely Swatter will be being reset in the distance. He is not, he is working top lobby gen. Okay, this is actually extremely dangerous. We have a top lobby gen, we have a bottom lobby gen, and two that are relatively close to it. And now Swatter will be able to get to some of these better pallets on the west side of the map. And we'll have to see how much time he can buy with these as we're playing some mind games with the bell to see if is he going to cloak is he not going to cloak as we saw it working out before but this one's not as safe to play as bubble greeds it a bit and now sorry as uh, water greeds it a bit and now bubble's going to leave him and try to get some eruptions put on these remaining gems as another one pops in the distance and this is the scenario that we've seen time and time again one survivor dead three maybe four gens left on the map 
how how is the wraith able to get a snowball off of some of these tags? Mm, I definitely if things need things. I'm oh, sorry. If Ionix wants to get the upper hand in this situation here, they need to get one of those middle generators completed. And a nice long chase onto a Rushi here would make the difference, but giving that tag a little bit too early at the pallet here probably could have wasted a little bit more time here. And plus, we're going to get body blocked at the window here. There's no way you make it to that one, but we still have this window to utilize. And I think Rushi not going for the instant vault. Bobo is just going <laughs> to walk straight through and get that tag. Now, why does the inside of his body look like ice cream? It's really been bothering me. <laughs> Strawberry ice cream. And we, we see, you know, some of these pallets, sure, they're not very safe, but Bubbo has been making exactly the right reads, you know, onto that chase. The Rusha here, reading, you know, back to back successful reads on first on the pallet, then on the window, knowing exactly which path the Rusha is going to take, getting the down. And now, you know, with Sasuo sort of hovering for the pull, but the problem again, Rushi is right between these two gens. And there's a third one that's not that far away, and eruptions on everything. But even with that god pallet being dropped, you know, what are you going to do here? You know, Sasuo doesn't really have the time to go and find Swatter and reset him. Most likely, Swatter is working on the one gem that's away from all of this. But, like, Sasuo either has to one for one for this, which, unfortunately for the survivors, would be another fresh hook, and every survivor injured. So, in a realistically, I don't think Sasuke is really able to go for this as long as Bubbo just stands here. So this is really only basically threatening Bubbo that he has to stand there so Swatter can work on that gen of the distance for free. But, uh, yeah. that's when we curtain for Arushi. As the yeah. doesn't even go for Bubbo <laughs> here. He's gonna, he probably is, is gonna know that Swatter is gonna be on the gen over here. It's the only play that makes any sense. And this is now very dangerous for him, as he's injured, he's not in a very safe part, probably taking uh, his path over to the streets, but not seeing the blood trail, not seeing any scratch marks. Oh, Swatter made it here. Uh, if only Swatter had gone upstairs instead, but power of hindsight, you know. He does not make that. Yeah, okay, so that that is in part some windstorm value that we're getting here. We've seen a couple of body blocks with the windstorm speed now, and with the eruption coming onto Sasua, Sasua's gonna be caught out here, and good luck taking this chase along as another body block. Oh, no, not completed! The stun comes in. That's a very long stun because he was so cloaked. But Bubba just stands here contemplating his life choices. <laughs> <laughs> and Sasua uh, gets yeah, a good yeah. distance there, but, you know, trying to uh, pick up the slug here would be rough, and it looks like Meg stopped running. Losing the scratch mark here, and so now Bubbo is going to have to pick up Ace, and this is where things can get a little bit spooky uh, on the killer side of things, because RPD is a map where we cannot normalize the stun. You can have scenarios where, okay, maybe your survivor team also gets to 4k2 here, because Sasuo is almost certainly not going to pop another gen, but what if Sasuo gets the hatch, and in the next game it's 4k2, but you don't win the hatch game? Then you lose the set basically off of the hatch spawn, so... Going for the hook here over the slug is a little bit spooky for Bubbo, unless he's able to find Sasso and, you know, that pallet stun into sort of just standing still and looking at the sky for no reason is possibly going to bite Bubbo. Yeah, this is, this is going to be really neck and neck in the end game here. It's obviously, you know, as you said, the hatch is going to be in a completely random position. We're going to have a look at both POVs, but Sasso is on a similar side of the to Bubbo, so Bubbo's going to be able to cover so much more ground than probably find the hatch before Sasuke here, all these areas have already been checked by Bubbo. Maybe it would be better to play for a door at this point, but Sasuke's going for it and trying to find it. I don't know. I I feel like w with the speed of Wraith going for a door is almost a guaranteed uh, loss here. And we are also kind of seeing the windstorm value of being able to... Oh, well, no. I guess Sasuke apparently agrees with you uh, on that door. You know, I guess <laughs> knowing, hey, well, there's not a hatch here, so this is where I want to be, but... Now it's kind of a gambit as to whether or not the hatch will be spawning far away from that door or not, as it looks like neither player are quite able to find it. And uh, the windstorm here, again, kind of come in handy, covering the map, getting more um, more vision on the hatch spawn, and possibly able to get from door to door quicker, but... Oh, so no, weird. I just heard it. I just heard ah. it. This building over here, and it's so close to this door as well. This is going to be where Bubbo checks first, I would imagine. 
No, no he wasn't. It wasn't. Wait. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. No, yeah, it Papa's is. Cooking. He shouldn't have time to finish that. Yeah. Oh no! There's no time. Maybe. 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 No, there's not a chance in the world. Opium. Uh, oh unlucky. no. Yeah, I was just gonna say this. So the only way that Sasuke gets out of here is if Sasuke just immediately goes for the door open and Bobo checks the main door. Because. And Bobo would have had a really good idea in his head that Sasuke was probably more towards that main door after already checking a decent amount of this side of the map, not finding Hatch, going over towards main side to either find Hatch or just find Sasuke. And then after coming back here, finding Hatch. It was, I guess, a little bit more obvious that that's where our Sasawa was going to be. But a 4k2 for Eternal's Killer. And we're going to have to see the sides get the swap to Eonix's Wraith to see if they can match or beat the results. Ladies and gentlemen, it's getting very, very tense. And I'm glad that this rate set is what we're at at the moment. This is an absolute blast. And we'll catch you all after the break. All right, welcome on back into the second half of the raid set. Once again, back on the RPD West Wing, and I think our survivors actually spawning on the West Wing this time. Definitely a more favorable start for Eternal on the survivor side here with the Onyx. Sasua, nonetheless, on the killer here, going for the more traditional pick of the Shadow Dance out on though, as opposed to the Windstorm. Is going to be going for this first chase onto X Ice. Will be able to get the tag though after getting rid of two fairly decent pallets. And with with X Ice, you know, very quickly finding the biblioteca, we we do have a little bit of an interesting padding choice here, going back the direction that the pallets have already broken. These are better pallets, but. Uh, Exile is not quite able to get more after those first two, and another fast down coming in in these Wraith games is really rough, but this hook is a little awkward for anyone to try and get to, so we'll have to see. There's pretty decent gen progress on this top lobby generator. I don't think that was a pain resonance hook, so that will be at least a little bit of relief to survivors, so they're working both lobby gens, and these are kind of the gens that you want to crack early, as Dan's going to go for a fast pull here. And we'll see the... You know, Sasua has pushed the top of the gen off as Bubbo kind of body blocking this um, attack anyway. You know, there's sort of a mind game here. Is, is he going to actually pull the uncooked and go for the swing? And Sasua wins that mind game as now Bubbo should be able to. No, Bubbo makes that. He, he might have to drop it fast. He's not going to play this game again, is he? Yeah, no. There's no shot. If, mm. if Bubbo goes down there, he it just throws the whole game. He has to play this safe. But now that Chase is going to the. You know, the east side of the map, and this is, as we've seen, an extremely dangerous place to chase. As now, Bubbo is basically playing for the Palestine. Because if it gets oh, it. Wow! Bubbo's gonna get the Palestine on, I think, the more favorable side as well. So that's why we're gonna straight up just drop the chase and go back to the main lobby to stop these gens from getting completed. As we do manage to catch out, this is the magic of the Neo. He gets the swing, he knows, oh, but you gotta be more precise with your camera movement. That's really, really unlucky. Palestine is gonna come through. And stunned again, as we like to say. Yeah, and, you know, this is just such a rough situation for Sasuke. He's really hoping for some faster downs than what he got here. Honestly, kind of hoping for, for a better spawn logic here, too. But now he's coming back on to Excise. Round two in the library is the pallet drop coming in. And now this is an interesting pallet for the uh, survivors to play around as far as the race of uncloak speed. As Excise is going to play the drop pallet, we do have another split race coming in here. <laughs> I love this bug so much. But this is the tag. It's not, wait, what? What? <laughs> uh, sort of swinging for it and then realizing you're not going to get the hit anyway and you sort of swing a little bit back in the same direction. It's always very goofy to see. But I think the chase is going to be continuing. No, actually, swapping over to the magic over towards the middle. Not going to be able to get attacked before we make it to the spawn pallet. I'm just going to go for the insta cloak, break that pallet nice and quickly and see where we can get the magic zone to. But that's, that's a really unfortunate thing as well. You really can't commit to the chases for too long. Otherwise, the objective is just going to get absolutely pumped out. And Sasua knows this. And going for the chase onto our, our Rizzy Bill, Mr. Dan. Yeah, Survivor's doing a good job of not being caught out. Being, you know, we keep seeing, oh, Sasua is on this Survivor. Now he's on this Survivor. Now he's on the other Survivor. And they're all at pallets whenever he finds them. And they're just not getting over these fast downs. And We've got one hook, and we've got three gens popped. And this is now the the tied amount of generators, but with only one hook. 
wins off when he's 12. And this is going to be so difficult to try and recover from as there's still more pallets. And this is a pretty decent pallet too if if uh, LeMagic just stays here. But it looks like LeMagic opting to take distance away from that generator and playing this longer loop. But we'll have to see if there's another thing to be worked on in the distance here. Because all LeMagic has to do is buy time for one more gen to pop. And this is a pretty decent pallet. But the, the uncloaked mind game coming in as yeah, Software does win this one. Split Wraith again, let's go. This time he's not pinked on the inside. I wonder what happened to his Pepto Abysmal is now the magic's gonna get hooked in the middle of the map, but we do have a reset coming in. The survivors have so much time to get their reset, get into position, because they have so many health or hook states left before they actually lose, and you know? This is a pretty pretty solid position for them to be in. Sosua basically has to wager on the survivors making some very, very crucial mistakes time and time again. Look, and look at the gen spread. It's just so far away from each other. And we still have the pretty simple here. It looks like the one good pallet on the side of the map. Yeah. Now I have to play that. Nice. Right, for lunge. But uh, Sosua... Yeah, no, it's... He has to go bust. He has to have time for it. Yeah, this is really unfortunate as the gen kit coming in the eruption being placed on it and maybe he's hoping to catch excess off guard here but i believe both street pallets are still up and even if they're not safe pallets you don't really want to be playing around any more pallets at all because you just don't have time to get as the down comes in on the soft split the eruption does get triggered and soft split decides that he can't afford to pick he has to go find someone else seeing someone on the eruption and gonna go for them but there's four survivors alive still, so there's you can afford to send bodies to go for this pick and still have someone on the generator. Yep. And that oh, is the windcon. And there it is. Yeah, windcon just being met. It's also really, really unfortunate for Sasuke that we didn't have a pain ritual in the middle. Hello, Bubu. At the pallet there, we'll get tagged, but Eternal very happy with the outcome of the game already, knowing that that windcon's been met. But if there was a pain risk hook in that middle part of the map, I'm very curious as to how differently the game would have been. And hello, Sasua. That's a big fat pallet stun. And that's going to let Bubba Zava to make it to the outside area with both of these street pallets to utilize if we were to come into the chase, which is not to be. Two hook stages, one gen remaining. I think we are going to get the reset onto the magic. Yeah, that's. A bit of an insult to injury moment. Pallet thing coming in, the reset in the face, and now Exile's playing this pallet, but the lunge not quite able to make it around. Is, this is a little bit of a tilter as Exile's just hit the pallet on off, but he's not going to be able to get anywhere. We are at a point in the game where most pallets have been used. There is still this one, but I guess Sasha may be concerned there might be a teammate around. Oh, there's also this pallet. This map has a deceptive number of pallets, but it looks like the the <laughs> west west swing you swing oh no ah! oh not my boy bill man getting caught in the corner trying to go for the pallet save wait He's okay i was gonna it. say i thought we saw a flashbang or something on uh, that would have been crazy ah! but, uh, we'll be able to access and still not really any solid use of pain res i think that's got a bit unlucky with the the pain res rng this time around you will see. He does have the firecracker, and you will see yeah. flashbang relatively often at uh, this this tier of play. With there's so many perk fans, but uh, you know, unfortunately, uh, Bill is a very loud character for the Wii. So once an injury comes in, Sasula knows I've got a bunch of injured survivors, and there's zero chance that Bill is going to sneak up on me when I pick. So now we've got an exile second chase once again. There are still both street pallets up, and this is an extremely unsafe pallet. But exile says it's done. And I don't even think that will be enough to make the other one, you know, this should be a fast one. No, he will make that pallet. He does get Gosh. another stun, and that's possibly enough to buy time for the remaining generators to pop. Look how far, and look how far away they are. Exos can 100% buy time here. Three. Wow. Done the game. <laughs> how Exos really far plays far. against the Wraith here. Beautiful pallet stuns and beautiful time waste as well. Sasua, I think the nerves sort of getting to him a bit here. Those pallet stuns are definitely a bit unnecessary. But is it enough time for the final gen to get done? I don't really think so. As we're going to be catching up, Bubbo trying to grind out this last gen. Doesn't drop the pallet though. I'm really liking the greed from our eternal survivors here. And it actually works out as well as that final gen gets done to the sound of the wood. 
Yeah, four straight pallet suns is really unfortunate. I mean, unfortunately for Sasuke, like, he is kind of at a point where you got to have to swing through those pallets and pray the survivors just don't get it. You know, you can get some interesting uh, ping hits with Wraith on the uncloak lunges, and now with this pallet being dropped, we're seeing just how unsafe it is. As uh, I'm sure Bubba would really like this pallet to be up and go for the sun again, but this will be a down coming in onto Bubba. He is uh, the third fresh hook, but you know, the wind con being met a long time ago. And with crouching eggs eyes, <laughs> waiting to see if um, Sasuke is going to pick Bubba, it looks like, because he does have a flashlight, but uh, Sasuke will just see him here and. We also have, there is a flashbang on bank, uh, on Bill's hill. With the firecracker. Oh my god! Wait, how is that an angle? What? Oh, it's an angle, all right. <laughs> the, the, the radius of the firecracker is definitely not to be underestimated. And Dan, my juicer on the bill. That was, that was awesome. Wow. Wow, indeed. That is an absolutely tragic game for Sasuaz. You know, moving into the Doctor set, you know, momentum in these series can be everything, mental can be everything, and, you know, having such a dominant showing in one game can easily, you know, carry your your attitude over into the next one. So, moving mm -hmm. into the Doctor set up next, the momentum is clearly in Eternal's favor. Ladies and gentlemen, the nurse is out, the doctor is in, and it's time for Arushi to see if Eternal have got their health insurance. As we have a chase onto Nightlight in the saloon very quickly. I don't think that's the kind of medicine we're looking for, as Arushi's gonna opt to leave the saloon and find survivors out on this street. We will, well, not actually commit to anyone over there, too. I, I wonder if Arushi is looking for a chase in a more optimal area, but deciding here to go for Ada after all, and kind of taking the long way around the tile, but uh, with proper check spots, Ada should be able to spot him out. And the nurse is out, the doctor is in. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> I had to. Uh, now, the real question is, where did Bubba just go? Because we haven't actually been able to find where, where, where Bubba's gone off to. just disappeared off into the corrupt side of the map, and we, we can't commit to that. We need to go back to the active gens and try and find a more favorable chase. There's a pal's already been pre-dropped in this very, very pallet dense area of the map. Excise pallet immediately getting broken though. I don't know if it's a strength or not, but this shock is going to get a tag on the Excise. So the pallet drop does come through, and I think this pallet is a little bit more delayed than it should have been. As Excise is going to be able to uh, get to the next pallet at the wagon here, but. Wow. Yeah, this is the really fun part of playing against Doctor, where you get shot repeatedly and you don't get to do anything. As uh, Exiles have going for the pre drops whenever he can, that's about all you can do. Is yeah, this is a Doctor will get you some pretty guaranteed hits, but they're not going to be terribly efficient. As Arushi switching chase onto Ada now, but not able to get a tag. And you know we're playing a, a game to see how long these powers will actually last. As Eternal Survivor is doing a good job of using these resources. And delaying these first hits, we'll just have to see how many gems they can get while these uh, chases are going through as there's bam onto that window, but Bubbo with the window is able to see everything he has to work with and he still has a lot. This is what they can do. Wow. What is this, an Oni set? Not given the first hit so, <laughs> for so long? This is really, really well played by the Eternal Survivors right now. You really gotta commend being able to not give a tag so early. And I'm especially impressed with Excise for not giving away a tag. Oh, and no shot coming through there! But the tag does come through onto Bobo over the pallet space. It's the first tag of the trial, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, we, you know, we mentioned this at the campfire chat earlier, wondering how this map would go and, uh, it looks like we're getting our question answered here as Free Drop City seems to be the name of the game. It's, it's just so difficult for the Doctor to actually secure anything. Like I said, this killer is pretty weak and even with a good map, this body block coming in, yeah, this is going to be bad news bears for the Doctor as Bill can basically guarantee this tag and that should be enough for Bubbo to make the main vault as now the chase goes on to Dan who does get to play main. Wait, no, the Doctor is not committing to him and with the third gen popping, and this is back on the Dan actually, and he does have some good pallets over here still. I don't know if playing this pallet is what you want to do. Going for the stun, not making it, Arushi just swinging through it, but look down on the pallet. He has to be so careful to not get the pallet put over. If this pallet save goes through, he loses all this pressure, but he will get this hook. 
It has to be a pain grab, but it's really going to pop him before it. Arushi's gonna have to bank on a no head play essentially, or Rancor, and it looks like he is ready for- Oh, no pain res, my bad. Definitely uh, expecting that he will need that in-game insurance policy of the no head, of the Rancor, and uh, Exize definitely has to be careful for that looking forward. Mm, I would definitely like to see a Doctor Bori, that's for sure, so we'll have to see how Exize plays it as we go into the end game. As I, I don't think there's any obsession in changing perks that we will know of. Exize can be juicing up at the water tower here, just wasting as much time as possible before giving a tag. Oh, and the tag doesn't even come through! Exize is untouchable! Yeah, and we, we do have this BAM, but Exize has like two pallets here that are not dropped and a third one that is dropped. He gets distance to make it to main, and or, yeah, Arushi does not want to play that. There's a very interesting interaction here where, yes, Doctor can shock you to stop you from vaulting things to, from dropping pallets, but the shock doesn't go uphill. So if you're just running up those stairs in main, you can't get shocked away from that window. <laughs> and that's part of why Arushi's probably not going for those chases. And, and possibly even, we have some of these like smaller stairs in these houses around the street, and. You can have some vaults like that there too. Those are those are not being played as fibers aren't allowed to have balanced landing or anything. But you know we might see it over here on Ada if uh, this pallet doesn't quite work out for her. Another hit coming in. Wow. Yeah, and the hit tags have been so, so good this game. <laughs> the resets already come through onto Exile. Dan has been long reset, and Bobo is continuing this chase. It is still a fresh survivor that we're going for here. Nightlight is also fresh, but we have Exile coming in for a hit as well. Oh my goodness! And and this is why we we would see like forced pennants coming in for Doctor players on like a CT set for this, knowing that in a pure M1 set these hit takes make it so difficult. Think of like how hard Arushi's having to work to get one hit, and then once you get that first hit, oh someone comes in so you don't even get the down off of it. It is so difficult for him to play this. Now with the discipline add-on coming in. It is making it a little bit my harder for me to see, but yeah, this is just painful. As Bubbo maybe caught out in the middle, he has a pallet to play over there. This is not a great pallet, and Arushi not committing as that pre-drop comes in. You know, I I wonder who he's gonna pick to chase here. I mean, ideally not Exize, and kind of the unfortunate part is, yeah, you've got 400 survivors. That takes away a lot of the value you get out of Noah and Rancor, and. Maybe the movement speed will help them with some of these cases, but, you know, they are running out of some of the better pallets on the map, but Bubbo knows exactly what he has to work with because the window's here, and gonna play this reading it, does yeah. get the pallets done, and, you know, this should be the last gen popping relatively quickly, and with only one hook state, this is a very unfortunate uh, game, as the anti loop here not helping with this particular pallet is... Yeah, Bubbo playing this chase actually quite well, it's... He should not be able to make anything, and this will be a basement down, almost certainly, <laughs> into the head-on, but <laughs> Hello. a bit of a disrespect head-on, but I don't think Arushi was expecting Dan to be there. Maybe he heard him as... Oh. Wait, what? Whoa, I guess whoa, going for a three? But yeah, Bubba I think we're good for another salty. Bubba was carried for a little bit, that might be enough for Bubba to get away if he gets picked up again and he's probably somewhere decent. I I don't know, because also Dan has been hooked before. Dan is definitely the lesser value survivor here to hook. Only two more pitches on him, there were three on Ada, and that was a basement hook. I'm really confused by this choice. I don't know what shocks me as well, no pun intended, is that even Exice is starting to get a little greedy here to get in on the action and maybe go for a play here, but going over to the door here, we will see that they will be able to make it out if needs be, as we need to go back for that pick up onto Dan. We only have Nightlight in the map right now, and we're forcing the out, trying to go for that delayed swing after the wave to maybe get a cheeky Rancor Mori, and Bubba's not even crawling out to try and incentivize Sus Suswa? Oh, sorry, Arushi. I was getting the names mixed up, but this is such an awkward spot for Arushi if we can't find Nightlight with this shock, which we don't. Yeah, and that was always the risk for Nightlight sticking behind to try and get this pickup is the fact that the Static Blast could have caught him out, but with it being used and being such a long cooldown, Nightlight should be sitting pretty here and possibly, possibly going for this door instead, knowing that if Arushi is just chilling at this other door, you can't get past that. 
Maybe the call coming in. Oh, they see the Noah totem, but that's not really going to change much for this. Is with two slugs on the map, one of the, one of them is already basically out, and Dan almost there. Arushi's hope right now is basically to find Nightlight, but Nightlight doing a good job of not oh not being seen. Nightlight doesn't have a whole lot to work with here. They need to stall long enough for Dan to crawl out the exit gate. That is the timer now, because unless they can get the hatch for Nightlight, he's almost certainly going to die here. Yeah, but that's the thing. Arushi has no idea how close Dan is to the door here. It's going to come down to the wire here. Is Dan's not going to be able to make it to the door. And Nightlight is going to get caught, which is going to turn a one-stage game into a four-stage with two fresh. Still a very, very impressive result from Eternal Survivors here, but still, that could have been so much more. Yeah, the, the 1k4 is... You know, a really, really easy win con to meet going forward. All it takes is one mistake into a camp, into a no-ed play, and Eternal will be able to make that. You know, the survivors from Aeonix can make no mistakes going forward. We saw how painful Doctor can be to play if the chases come through long enough, if the body blocks come in, and that's the template for what Aeonix have to pull off in the next game, which will occur after a short break. Hello everyone and welcome back to what could be the final trial of the losers bracket finals where the pressure is entirely on Ionix right now on their survivor team needing to beat well four stages we saw in the last game they need to somehow get three stages to still get everyone else out the door and we already have a quick pallet break and a chase that was onto Urushi but now I think swapping over to Sasua towards the shack area who's i think kind of picking up on eternal strategy of uh, having a bill on the team equaling a guaranteed win yeah and we saw a lot of hit takes in the previous game so exiles is definitely <laughs> foregoing his hippocratic oath with this sloppy busher making sure that the survivors are not actually able to heal against the doctor as we're gonna get a tag onto bill and that was a lot quicker than what we were seeing in the previous game and survivors starting to double on the gens they know they are running out of time as Bill with the free drop, but uh, he is able to change these pallets and these windows relatively well, but not quite able to make this vault, and that's how you play against Doctor. You want to be able to take your pallets and chain them into a window to play around the shock. As the hit's going to come through, not able to make it. He is on the pallet, so with the sh static boss coming in to suss out where this palisade might be coming from, and now she's going to slaughter. Good hit coming in. He's in the distance. You know. Yeah, Dr. Exiles is not messing around with this preventative medicine, making sure we do not see a Plague Call. And Exiles is actually just going to double dip and go for more here. He's chasing onto Swatter here at the Shack. Go for the pointers to try and make it onto the pallet, but not going to get that distance quite yet. And without Pain Res, we can just so easily take this hook into the basement, camp this to Illumination, and then use Noah to, to confirm a death. And that would already be win con for Eternal, but... I think Excise is definitely going to be playing for a greedier playstyle and going for a lot more than just that. With that hook, oh, what up in the basement? Things are really going to be looking tough for Ionix, but I think Excise thinks something fishy's going on. Oh, he has the time. He has all the time in the world. Without the first gen popping before that second down, actually, Excise can also, because this Gallus gen is so close to the hook, he can not only interrupt this and prevent the basement well i mean he can't really stop them from pulling because it's still just an m1 there's no no threat of a two tap there's no threat of an insta down but he can make them one for one and with the wincon being so shallow a one for one is basically a loss if swatter goes second a one for one into a camp or into a noed is just an auto loss for the survivors here so Exiles yeah. is in complete control, and the survivors are going to have to pull off some, you know, SEAL Team 6 plays on the basement, and, you know, Gabriel might be on the case here, as he does have a, some pallets in the back of Gallus to play, as some of these gems haven't popped, so this is not a bad place for chases and downs to go, but unfortunately, they just don't have the hook wow. to go over it. Gabriel doesn't urge you with such a fantastic read, and he will be able to make this pallet, actually, no, he will not. He should be able to make the shack pallet now, but that swing is a little bit ambitious. Yeah, 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 ambitious indeed, and it looks like Arusha is actually gonna go. Oh, 
one. But the enemies will come off in time that there might be some time for Swatter to at least take this hit for Arushi and allow them to both get out of the shack. Oh no! Problem Steve! Then we get the hit past Swatter onto Arushi. And now Exos is just going to go for more. Go for this elimination onto Swatter and, and then back for Arushi. So Swatter needs to waste as much time as possible. Really nice bolt. Third gen gets completed. We need Swatter to survive here if Eonix wants any chance to get that set point, but going back for this pickup onto Arushi, and this is where the biggest of problems are gonna emerge. Yeah, if, you know, you can have a camp onto Arushi here, and that would be enough to secure Wincon, and there's still a Noah coming in. Yes, the survivors have had pretty good gen progress, but unfortunately, the hook states are just not there as well. They have to somehow get Arushi off the hook before he goes second. Or, or, you know, he can go second, but he can go second, and then still play around the Noah, and get everyone out. And we have two injured survivors through Sloppy, with no healing perks, and the Doctor can just sit here, and they don't have the time to reset, so Kenigzeg is the only survivor that can come in for the save. Exiles can see them working that Lash in the distance, he knows, well, okay, pop that gen for all I care, I've got Noed, and then what are you gonna do? Are you going to pull Arushi in my face with Noed? Arushi has to get off this hook or they lose. Mm, you you got to admit though, Eonix is doing a really good job at least keeping up the tempo of the game with their gen pressure. I believe that final gen should be moments away from getting completed as Phoenix Egg is on the back area of the main building. Yeah, probably about another 20 seconds or so, if not less before that gen gets completed and I think the second stage has been confirmed onto Rushi, which gives Exa the chance to come in and interrupt this uh, this generator. Yep, that secures Ty at least, so Exa's only have to play for one more down with 200 survivors with Noed coming in. He has, you know, he can easily afford to leave that as, uh, you know, Sasuo has to fight for his life on the pallet and playing for the pallet save makes sense, but the static blast can come in and the there's no pallet at Shaq, so this is a little bit of a risky proposition, as I don't think they can actually try and go for the now with all three injuries. You can't sneak up on this, and you don't have exhaustion, so closing that distance is going to be hard. They are sort of coming from both directions, but if any of them give a down over, that is game over, as it looks like uh, Kenigzeg will be that down, as a hook here is a win. Yeah, but still very valiantly played by Ionix, though. Keeping up with the pressure that Exiles was enforcing, and with this hook onto Kenigseg, though, that will confirm the third set point being awarded to Eternal. I'm waiting for someone to yell at me in the staff chat in case I'm wrong, but I think I'm right with this one. I'm not going to get gaslit again. Eternal are going to be your victors for the losers bracket finals and we'll ha we'll be going back up against Elysium for a rematch in the grand finals of the All Hallows League which will be once again starting tomorrow at 5 p.m. CET same start time as today but really really well played to Eonix you really have to give it to them for being down to the losers bracket from week one from day dot to make it all the way to be the team that came in third place in the tournament it's really something you shouldn't scoff at and definitely a very impressive effort absolutely you know and and it was a a long string of two o's basically uninterrupted with only losing a oh. single set in the losers bracket to misery oh yeah they have they have nothing to lose here and i'm, oh, I'm yeah. just curious to see who's gonna be the one to face hank wait no they've already cleansed noah haven't they yeah 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 long okay I was like, whoever face tanks noah is the real giga chat of this game is it looks like water's fishing for this pole. He does have FTP. I don't know if we'll see a playoff of that. Tag comes in onto wow. Sasua, and the. I mean, they should be able to get out here. It's an M1 with no Noah. You can't force this, but yeah, the body blocks are going to come in, and this should still technically be a four out, despite. Uh, it's a little bit of good recovery. Actually, no. He, oh, oh, he doesn't. He doesn't. Yes. He doesn't. Oh, wait. Oh, hang on a minute. Arushi. <laughs> Arushi, no. <laughs> oh, dear. That is Water really, really unfortunate. No flashlight, no firecracker, no nothing like that. Swatter was out of position for that Viva save, and this is where the Blood Warden comes in. Ah, no, sadly not. That will be the I'm three out for Eonix's survivors, and the win for Eternal. Yeah, you know, the survivors, you know, still playing to the end as if, you know, 
they they had something to prove here and they made a good statement. I'd say they're they're looking pretty good going forward in uh, whatever the next event might be.